Hello everyone. Today's talk is titled Transcendental Exploration. And we will be exploring what those ideas mean. And so transcendental exploration is simply what Mr. What Mr. Within means by uh, the normal human experience expanding through a self-aware process. So transcendence means that you're first aware of there being something to even transcend. The fact that transcendence is, is very interesting for a being is because it is its own movement into a greater application. So what that means is there's, for example, let's say one intelligence stream of consciousness, which is man. You know, let's say there's other intelligence streams for animals, and let's say everything else that can be conceived or considered has any potential to be in any stream. However, regardless, um, you will see that there are different ways in which existential intelligence can be viewed. It can be viewed externally as if you are a small piece of uh, a small mote of dust, a uh, speck of dust in a in a beam of light. You're choosing how you interpret the experience that is meaningful for you. Now, transcendental exploration suggests to how you are living a life right now. And this life, you're aware of it, you know your life, right? So now that you're aware of this life, there are some moments throughout the day where you feel as if you can give yourself more permission to do things, uh, but you don't, you know. So it's very important to see that if you're attracted by a different environment than the one you're focused in every day, it's as if something in you as a being. When we look at transcendental exploration, you as a human being are going deep in within yourself. You're taking your normal life and seeing how it's no longer normal because you want something more. Excitement is valuable because excitement is showing you where your system ends, as if your plane of limitation uh, ends. So what that means is there are some moments where, let's say I go in and act, let's say I try an activity I've never done. And so when I'm trying that activity at first, I don't know what to do. But then I will see if I persist, if I just as a being continue in that direction, eventually I will be so introduced to that imagery of what needs to be done that I will absorb it and be able to express it. You see, the human being is receiving information and then observing it in a sense to then form new ways of being. So what that means is that the observer within you has always been driving <coughs> the object of observance. And hence all bodies are vehicles in the sense that they belong to greater movements which are observed by a more of a sense of a collective consciousness. It's as if if your whole life you thought you were this individual here, you're beginning to realize that by looking at what life means to you, you are giving yourself the existential masses of joy. And so as you do, you will begin to see that there is no outside, and then there is no inside. It's as if language, if it's not constantly being projected by man, if the projector is not constantly kept on, if it's turned off, suddenly becomes hollow. It's like, if you really don't want to listen, you can tune out of it. You can, I could suddenly, you could turn my words into a language you don't understand. And simply this is the ability of the mind, but it's very important to see what you are. Because if you are choosing to be something that you're not, there is a, uh, there's simply a conflict in your system. In other words, clarity needs to be something that brings you ability. Clarity is not something to just accept and have your life not be uh, treasured, your life be in ruins and not be treasured. <coughs> You need to be very aware of how you are being kept in reality because you are keeping yourself here. And when you begin looking at that, suddenly it gets a transcendental quality. It's as if Bob suddenly is no longer going to the beer store, but in, in that chair where he was sitting down, he suddenly experienced all life just being life, just being alive. 
and preserve presence with presence. And the minute it became aware, aware of itself, the whole cosmos stood up in a very respectful way. <clears throat> so if awareness out of a system is a great deed, and the minute you come out of it, you will be guided by the flows of generosity because you have absorbed an understanding of what uh, compassion is. Compassion is, is an aspect of your own greater nature that realizes there is no need to fight because there is no cause. You usually fight for a cause. And so when you become aware in a simultaneous sense, reality is not uh, that elusive. You know what it's like? It's as if right now human beings have been thinking in, in, a, in the same way for a while. They've just think, been thinking that, you know, that the scientists come and we've been thinking that we're all objects. Now, suddenly we're saying, okay, as much as we say we're objects, the creativity that comes to a human being suggests a transcendental exploration into one's own greater intelligence. So when a person, when you, when the human being suddenly becomes really able, it is no longer just human. It becomes an ability that is present within its whole environment. It's as if it's, it becomes a quantum leap into that understanding. There is no ridicule that needs to hinder you. There is no voice that needs to echo for too long. You are allowing life just as you're allowing this YouTube video to be played. Be aware of your life and realize that it's fascinating. If you just become aware of how this uh, how, the, how your body is kept, how just its intel existential intelligence, your being aspect before you cover it up with ideologies of humanity, you know, you will see it is empty in the sense that through that emptiness all is perceived in clarity. Paradoxically, one may take steps into a cave where the end was always the beginning. Do you know what that means? That means you have gone to an end, dead end. The end is always a beginning. Do you understand this? So simply how you are interpreting you is suggesting your universe. And so it's very important to make these distinctions because uh, exploration now can be done in a very multidimensional way, way. So what that means is people right now are suddenly realizing uh, okay, we're not just objects, it's as if we are present through a greater collective intelligence, you know? It's as if all those monkeys who, in, in, that, in, that, in that experiment, who suddenly very remotely began uh, having the same skills, similarly, human consciousness is not disconnected. Because that which is energetically and existentially keeping the human form human is Ah, uh, it's like it's a knowing in a certain sense of conception that is empty. So it's very important to get an understanding of emptiness and nothingness as you look at how one can become an advanced communicator. An advanced communicator is you tapping to an intuitive database where from this intuitive database you begin working with the way you know how. It's as if that moment where you're getting off a chair and you just know how to walk but you're just stretching, right? So as you trust your intuition, at first you go through many, many, many circles of doubt because you feel they're not going anywhere. You feel as if uh, uh, your senses are not clear. You know, you feel as if like uh, you don't need all this. You, you, the search should be easier, you know. But regardless of what you feel, you will see that as you begin looking deeply, you are moving towards a subtler level of a new sense of an experience of your own existential intelligence. So what that means is that we've been, for example, my whole life I went with this experience, not whole of it, but just my idea was that space and time is a box on it. But then, as life changed, I very mindfully noticed that everything is in an infinite change. Even my voice right now, it is being kept because there are infinite changes that are keeping even a sense of shape for us to consider. The vastness of this reality means 
that me as a human being communicating now am just a new projection of reality in your bubble of presence. So it's as if neither I'm here, neither you are here, but because we're simultaneously present, our experiences can flow. I mean, it doesn't matter the colors on the canvas. Once the awareness of the canvas is there, it's as if you're like that blank page experiencing all words ever written. And so that is transcendental. That is when your exploration becomes uh, very curious about no longer other things. You're no longer searching for external treasure, but internal treasure. And internal treasure is taking you where? Up the mountain to the peak of knowing your absolute reality. And what that means is, this is a healthy attitude. You as a human being, wherever you are, you know, you must have it, like, just like that parachute, suddenly stop, be very calm and still and gentle, and suddenly contemplate and observe your whole life and make a decision based on an existential awareness, not an awareness uh, covered in ideology. What that means is if you're, if you're sitting there on a piece of paper making a plan, it will never be enough because the solution requires you to implement an action and pu uh, to put forth an intention based on your whole moment of existence, not just one little thing in your moment of existence. Your stories and your sense of what a thought is, is your interpretation of the environment in showing what it is. In other words, thought is not present because we are saying the environment is present. Do you see that? So when we choose to tune even one degree, worlds open up, you know? It's just like that moment where one single push can change the life of a skydiver who's skydiving for the first time. You know, it's, it's very it's very important to see that wisdom is clear awareness to what is existing now. And the wise is being tuned into the present. You ask him, are you happy? Are you sad? He's like, no, there's no happy or sad now. You know? It's as if if last two was standing beside you and you would uh, tell him your dramas and your pains and you know every soap opera you've ever seen, dramatizing how your life is not enough, Lao Tzu would stand there and be like, what is not enough? You know, it's as if he, his awareness would be to a world where there is action through inaction. In other words, your internal reality adjusts your externality. The reason we have so many esoteric sciences, so many people bringing new relationships, including also myself, uh, but mine is in a very unique context. I don't even know what kind of context it is now, but anyway. Um, all these senses of new ways for man to explore his existence are all coming from a, a look at the physical being at first. What that means is the reason you go asking who am I is because you're choosing an am I. So you're saying I am Bob. <laughs> so when Bob has chosen family, just like how knights choose armor that his, that's him, you know, he will go into fight and not even realize why he's fighting. And what that means is that the mind is not something to call it a mind and assume that you're a body. That is a dangerous way of being aware of your moment of being which holds all transcendental exploration. And so this transcendental uh, exploration, as the Maharishi has very beautifully said, uh, is, is similar to a sense of potential dynamism. So what that means is, for example, I'm sitting on a bench, and let's say if my mind could copy and paste this reality, this, this projection of reality, in my subtler mind. So imagine in my imagination, I just have like seven versions of this reality, right? And if I could experience all those seven in one moment, I would suddenly see that there would be no one reality. It's as if the minute the drop merges with other drops and 
uh, in a sense, connects to the stream, it is no longer a drop. It is flowing with a different command, different direction. And similarly, we're looking the, uh, at the human mind, and it's as if the human mind, in its observance of what is real, is doubting itself to then, from that doubt, jump up. So it's as if mankind, in its limitations, has just been creating stepping stones, because that's the end of the tunnel. The apocalypse means the end. What's after the end? Perhaps the only thing that could be is a new beginning. Because the existence is not going anywhere. And it's changing. We are realizing the nature of this reality is temporal. So if we are looking at existence, an image that is changing, and we are also an image, it is meaningless to try to externally uh, extend out our sciences but rather to have an internal awareness that gives us an existential, existential platform that it's as if like from a greater knowing we utilize science not linearly, non-linear allowance. It's as if that intuitive moment where you're making one of the most coincidental and perhaps proper actions without reason, just with your simple feeling. You know? So now imagine as we become more advanced communicators, as the pilots of consciousness find their hats, they find their, uh, in a sense, knowing, they will see that in their own search, they have carried themselves as if like boiling water, as if boiling all these images of lifetimes and shapes and forms and whatnot. And as you focus on human experience, it's as if the lion is roaring. It's as if you, you are experiencing a new way of your own presence altogether. You know, it's as if your whole life, again, has been individual experiencing the collective, but now it's the collective experiencing the individual. So as if that there have been moments where I've, I don't want to say out of body, but I have been in a certain experience which has, it's unspeakable. That's all I can say. And in that experience, in that, sense of sitting down and just being absorbed in my absolute being, your knowing is functionality on a higher level. So what you will find, which is very interesting, a very interesting phenomenon, that when you go look at the thinker, when you try to think about where the thinker is, you are in a sense of self-reflective state as if your new idea is always between two mirrors. It's as if you can always get a better idea and you can always get a worse idea. So truth is nothing to be talked about because it's a ridiculous game. It's as if people who were discussing truth, none of them knew it because it, the way they were doing it was wrong. Truth was a direct experiential thing rather than something to talk about or imitate. Imitation, in a sense, is, I believe, without understanding. And so we want our decisions to be done not with just an individual understanding, not from an under understanding from a branch of knowledge, but with an understanding of the totality of your moment of being. You will see that in, in exploring your sense of transcendence and what that word means to you, and how that word can initiate many different realities based on how you are observing it, you will see that you will reach a point where you'll, you'll feel as if like perhaps Frodo when he came to that point in, where he had never crossed the Shire. You feel as if like you've reached somewhere where if you make a decision, stuff's going to happen out of your control. And so this is where your choice must they be basking in sincerity. In other words, when you're at that edge, just like Frodo, you got to decide if, if you really want to know who you are. Because if you don't, then your question is unnecessary and a part of you feels that there's no need to ask because the warmth of your couch is pleasant. <laughs> you always need to ask what you are. In other words, that pe many people are being bothered by bullies. You know? Oh, you know, don't think the toughness of reality is just bullies. Because as consciousness, 
you will see that you must always bully your, your ideology to the point that you're no longer the bully or the person being bullied, but an awareness to all potentials of how a movement, uh, similar to a, the movement of a butterfly's wings, can have the most chaotic effect. And so your cause becomes your direct experience, which is unspeakable, so you can never say, this is my purpose. I mean, would you, for example, let me say it like this. Let's say uh, me and you are walking in a fair, right? And let's say <laughs> you go to a stand, me and you're going to stand, and, you know, we, we get muffins or something, and, you know, we're just eating food, right? So let's say we get a muffin. Now, <laughs> if you say my purpose was only to eat this muffin, and you look with great honor to the skies, you know, you will suddenly feel like, no, it wasn't. Because you can also make another statement. Because you can make another statement, your truth never feels comfortable if it's basking in the imagery of your communication. So the way I, have, I, I find certainty in the way I speak is not actually linear. So I'm comfortable with just allowing things to happen because of many synchronistic incidents and just simply how I've tapped into what I believe. At first I am, but then seeing that as I live and be aware of my being, all beliefs fade into direct experiences. As if you see there was no illusion because the whole time you were directly experiencing it. So you see, there are many audiences in reality and you know, we thought, oh my god, 8 billion people were just the audience for people you can hear. No, these 8 billion people are all receiving in multi-dimensional ways in the sense that the way they're being aware of their own conception in their own internal experience is opening their world. Think of how fascinating it is that I have a world that I know, which is my eyes and what they have seen since they've opened up, and you have a world which is your eyes and what you've seen. And so, regardless of how much we're communicating it, but we have such a vast experience, uh, uh, um, in a sense, a vast observance of our own uh, uh, infinity, you know? It's like the lines in the palm of William Blake's hand were suggesting that destiny never needed to be shaped and that's why everything was always destined. That's why you see that in the ability to acknowledge reality through a multidimensional sense of knowing, innate knowing to your presence, you can become a very powerful being. So what that means is I'm seeing human beings here and I'm realizing the path is uh, not something that uh, the engineering it has not been well. So I, I personally find what Mr. Wilson is pretty much here to do is to um, at first reverse engineer psychology and perception uh, vocally and then afterwards uh, show how the reason we deconstruct such structures is that you become aware of your ability to put your structure, you know? So this is not a guru setting. This is, this is simply one human being telling you, all right, man, wake up, be clear, see clarity, try to understand what wisdom is, get situational awareness, have an awareness to all forms, including your body, physical body, and your bodies of thought. Look, are you walking by, for example, good people around you? Are you walking around good ideas? In other words, do you have access to knowledge? Do you own a phone and an ability to type in Google? If you do, then Google plexes of information uh, can, in a sense, open to you. It becomes very fascinating to see that your vastness always knows how to take care of itself, but at first, we were shaky because we're trying to figure things out. You know? But after you figure it out, you're like, you know, why didn't anyone tell me? And then you just look at where you are and you're like, oh, that's why. Because you need to figure it out on your own. And so the, each transcendental exploration, my friends, is your ability as a treasure revealer to look at what your internal dimensions mean and look at what your external dimensions mean and through the observance of both, communicating your direct experience in the sense that uh, all talks, are being done by themselves, all words are being written by themselves, all mind is present within itself with a totality of awareness of multiple conception, in the sense that inspiration is not relevant to just your location. You thought you were getting only inspired by the physical things in your reality, no. Inspiration is your ability to experience your greater sense of intelligence 
beyond space and time. And so this is your existential in uh, intelligence that cannot be spoken about. It's your experience. And that's simply it, guys. That's what can be said. Transcendental exploration is how you look at who's within your eyes. And as you perhaps find Mr. Within, mankind can remember that it was never here for man. It was here for the whole cosmos. Our existence was never just for the planet. It was for where the planet is. In other words, we think we're on a planet. No. Just as how we're associating with the greatest spectrum, we don't need to have intermediates. We are here for everything that exists. Because our association as an individual being in space and time comes from recognizing uh, or observing all that exists, all conception. And so the observer is the knowing that was always transcendent, and so there is never a mistake. Rumi, a very realized poet, has this quote, a poet from many years ago, and around that time. He says, beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a place. I'll meet you there. What he is suggesting by that quote, my friends, is that this human being in his experience of life suddenly recognized that his duality, his whole suffering, his whole problem was that he was creating through his free will. It's as if free will never came with an instruction manual, so people began creating all things of havoc which they were entitled to. And so as the titles are looked in, in other words, as you look at the etymology of how terminology is real for you, your direct experience always overlays it. In other words, once you get a bit curious and you just self-contemplate and look very deeply at your idea, suddenly it's just as a part of you, like your intuition, it just wakes you up. It makes you realize, okay, this is not for me, you know. And you might even get this from any talk, any, anything you hear, any information that comes to you, if it's not resonating with you, you will in a sense see, you will immediately have the ability to push it away, you know. It's that moment perhaps where that, uh, where that guy thought he never had an ability to do great things, but always saw he had an ability to, for example, ignore people or throw trash on the ground, you know? Ability is something, or skill, is something that is present there and is done by your being beyond uh, education, in that sense. Beyond a sense of uh, constantly planning. So what that means is when you look at that ceramic master in Japan, whose hands for 40 years have learned to just move on their own and to shape just a sense of life in their clay, you would see that they have done it so much that it's as if he could do it eyes closed because his, the fact of repetition has instilled and evoked that sense of presence. So sometimes many people say that there is a, there's the concept of auras. I, in my experience, I actually feel the more able you become of your ability to tune into things, your, your perception no longer becomes re re relevant to you. So you no longer feel you have extrasensory perception. It's just that your experience is it's, it's very, it's just everywhere, you know? It's as if you're walking and you're no longer just, just the awareness of the individual in the room. You are the awareness of the whole space. It's as if the whole room is looking at you and so you know where you are. And so this is perhaps why it is very important to know what is here and now. And so the, the transcendental exploration uh, will be your, at first, your ability, it will require at first your ability to trust life. And in that trust and sincere, sincere uh, decision, 
a restructurization of a reality without guilt, you will find yourself moving swiftly and mindfully into the heavens of a greater uh, self-awareness. Greatness lies within man, within man, but man can never lie in greatness. So you will see that a great man is not one who is keeping dishonesty, but is realizing that he as a being before his uh, solidification of a human construct is an existential awareness that is able to create in many ways and to work with the apprentice that is here or the instrument that is here in a form where the composition is a fractal awareness. So it's as if that moment where I said star, there was an experience of a star there. And so as memories of starlight are in a sense remembered, man's dissolution will be the turn of his face at first to his shadow and then to his light and then to the terrace where yin and yang are standing and then to that eagle's eye to just flying to the realm of the sky. You will know your way. Much blessings and namaste.